So I went to the doctor's office today. He was giving the results of my checkup. So how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm glad to hear that. Good news, you're not pregnant. So I'm not pregnant, which is good, but he told me I was HIV positive. I don't understand. I spent one night with a guy, and it was my first time. I should have used protection. I don't know what I was thinking. guys job to no 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 both people should be responsible but you need to protect yourself how would you bring something like that up i don't know just ask him straight up have you been tested yeah the right guy should want to do the right thing you're right this is my body i choose what goes on here that's right that's right what's this
should have talked to this guy before I spent that night with him. It was my first time and I... I trusted him. I thought I knew him better. But we never actually had that conversation about using protection or who he's been with before or what might happen to me. I should have known better. I wish I could go back and change things. The doctor said it's confidential and no one will know. Do you think I should tell anyone else? I, I really don't know what I'm going to do now. She used to come by every day after school. I could always tell the kind of day she was having by the rhythm of her step. Sometimes, she stopped to speak her mind. And when she did, her thoughts poured out about school, boys, and being a motherless child. The more frequent she paused, the longer her conversations became. And I found myself attached to her experience, her questions, her journey. What more could I offer her but a safe place, an open mind, and silent ears for her words to sink into? Memories of you that haunt me collide with the raw energy of my space. All the little cracks that held your scent have opened up to release and suffocate. I can't breathe. Or am, am I, I holding, holding my, my breath? breath? I can't go back. Fearing I might catch a glimpse of you and her, seeing how you loved her when you should have been loving me. You, 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 you left, left me. How many times did we repeat the cycle? Leaving, Leaving returning, returning, separating, drawing near. Sometimes it was you, sometimes it was me. You left me! It was then I decided to break the legs of the pedestal I created because loving you became about losing myself. And, and as, as I cried an ocean of tears, my layers began to strip and I was left standing here in this body, in this life, trying to understand the ramifications of my actions. Breath. Take a breath. You aren't the air that I breathe. It is not death. Breath. Take a breath before you speak, before you move. Trap. Take a breath. Respect me. Begins with me, then you. Meditate. Contemplate how to speak these words to you. Because you told me you didn't love me even though every cell of your body spoke love to me. Everything I gave you, you threw back that one night I was so blind and I trusted you. I'm here, in this life, in this body, trying to understand the ramifications of my actions. I can't go back, only forward. I'm here in this life, in this body, trying to understand the ramifications of my actions. I am a woman. This is my body. I choose what goes on here. This is Dr. J, and I'm here to tell you, over 12,000 people in San Diego have AIDS. I've 
of all cases are people of color. Latinos are number one. Blacks, you're next. And the numbers for both of you all is on the rise. But women, you make up 10% of cases in Dago. all thought it was a white gay man's disease. Among teens, 60% of cases with HIV are women. Drug use increases your risk for infection. Hey, use protection. Get it tested. Hey, what are y'all thinking? AIDS is preventable. And you thought all you had to worry about was getting pregnant. is my body. I choose what goes on here.
I've known Gene Isaacs for quite some time as a very, of course, prominent uh, member and creative force in the dance community here in San Diego. And in 2005, I did a documentary about trolley dances, which is a uh, festival of site-specific dances that Gene created several years ago. And we talked at that time about potentially doing a, a project at some unspecified time for screen. And when Gene became aware of the county grant program, for 2006, she submitted a proposal after talking it over with me, which resulted in this video, in the rhythm of her step. And so it was a great chance to not only collaborate, as we had hoped to do, but also to collaborate on a project that I think is very, very worthwhile. The county was offering um, opportunities for uh, nonprofits to apply for funding to create uh, material for their network, for the county TV network. And so I applied um, and asked uh, UCSD TV to be uh, our partner with this, to be the technical and, and artistic part of that team for film and video. And from the beginning, our concept was to create a film that would appeal to kids, that kids would watch, that was a high energy MTV style um, video that wouldn't look anything like the stage production, but that would draw them in with that very quick frames and, and use of hip hop music and dance to, to really get to them right away. We know that the best education that there is, is peer-to-peer -peer education. And that's what this really is, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. It's, it's young adults talking to young adults in language that they can understand. We've had AIDS around for 25 years, and there are those people who have lived with it and heard the message for those 25 years, and it becomes stale to them. So anything that's new and refreshing and exciting like this is beneficial to the entire San Diego County community. Jean specifically asked me to work with her because, because she did want to do something that the, some kids would respond to in terms of what's in the mainstream America today and hip hop being one of those things that is used to sell various things. It's like a big marketing tool. And, but I also think she had asked me specifically because the hip hop that I do with VK Soul is not strictly MTV style. It, it does take um, a postmodern or a more theatrical approach, but I think both her and I working together, we spoke the same language, even though using sometimes different movement material. Jamie D is the resident DJ music director for BK Soul, and we specifically wanted to create music, uh, original music, for this project. The steps are grace is almost 90, 95 percent of the steps are grace is the it's kind of the structure and the way things were built and the scripting of this and all of the um, thought process about what we were going to try to do. Uh, came out of my brain, but that's how we've always been. <laughs> we hardly ever uh, don't see eye to eye. I, I think a lot of the co collaboration is just taking ownership of who who is going to take what role and you know fulfilling that role and also being open to things changing. This is Pete talk to show you how I live. You can come right to my crib and get it if you see it. be a man, right in front of my kids, a little bit. I think Jean had been reserved about doing it as a stage production, feeling like it was something that should be shot for film and distributed that way as opposed to a live performance.
I do think people that came to see the performance received it well. We had a lot of students come yeah. in, a lot of young middle school, elementary school. I don't no, know. Elementary. elementary. We did high schools and middle schools when we showed it on stage, and they were very pleased with it. This is so time consuming to make work for film over and over again and, and in the editing and things that get discarded that you're so, you feel are so precious. We have this wonderful, I think, duet on the box, but it came, as we saw the video, we realized that it was coming from a different world, not a clear narrative world like we're showing with Grace's story, but something she might have dreamed or imagined would be happening to her friend Veronica if she didn't, if she wasn't careful. And so the box duet was really coming out of a dream world and we, I think we all unanimously agreed that it, even though it was really interesting to watch, it didn't really move the story forward. duet that's happening is really suggestive but also different interpretations of you know how are you looking at these two people how are you perceiving their relationship is it abusive is it loving is it mutual and I think it'll resonate differently with different people mm -hmm. I think what we've done with the narrative part of our, our of Grace's story is really a different world the meaningfulness is more specific and more narrative oriented school or junior high school classroom for a while so I don't know how they deal with discussion we're I'm of the belief that it's that it's really hard to talk about in a public um, um, situation but that if kids will go home if they'll talk to each other afterwards one-on-one -on -one, or with a, a person they trust that's a little bit older I mean if you can talk with your, somebody in your church or your doctor but if you're if it's really uncomfortable this I think that this film will help you to see that you you need to get really good, accurate information and not be naive. Don't lose your life. <laughs>